Give me one second here. Okay. <laughs> to both of you, both of you are funny. <laughs> You know, I almost started making that uh, making that video where I had uh, an empty jug, an empty uh, carboy, and an empty demijohn. And actually, what I was going to do, I actually even gone through the process of printing out labels to help with the descriptions. So I had my demijohn, and I had my carboy, and I had my jug. I'm, I'm hanging on to these because that's probably a video that at some point I'm probably going to still do, okay? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've resorted to calling them Jimmy Johns just to take middle ground. But, okay, let's see. Looks like I've got eight uh, concurrent viewers, which is actually a lot more than I thought I would get for a mid-month, mid-week live stream. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and roll with it. I've got uh, just a few bit, bits of housekeeping mm. before I get started. Uh, let's see, a couple of things. Let me close that. There we go. Uh, of course, if you're new to DIY fermentation, uh, basically it's a, um, a home winemaking channel that tries to use as few uh, artificial ingredients as possible in the making of the wine. Uh, I don't really use sulfites or or um, clearing agents or basically none of the additives that um, a number of other people who are happily making their home wines that way. Uh, I don't use a lot of that. So I try and keep things as simple as possible. Uh, I've been making wines for about just over a year now. So basically I'm still a novice. And the purpose of this channel is to keep things at a level that a simple novice can understand uh, without getting too far into advanced techniques and topics. So it's going to be a, basically a stepping stone for, for most people. Uh, Find the figures in a house. Uh, just call mine by a name. For, <laughs> it's a cool. All right. And thank you for that simplicity. Well... If that's all you know, you can only put it one way and it's as simple as possible. Um, let's see. Uh, one other item uh, in the form of camera donations. If you've seen uh, uh, my last live stream or any of my uh, videos since then, you know that I've been like uh, begging for donations for a new camera. Uh, the cell phone is, is pretty much got to go. And uh, along those lines, I've got a few. Yeah, this works. I've gotten better at using the OBS software. Uh, uh, the camera is the uh, Canon Rebel T8i uh, body. I've already got a Canon lens for my old camera before I had to sell it years ago. Uh, donations have been received so far from uh, Karina Barrett. It's an old donation, but hey, it's always worth repeating. Uh, Perfect Zero Labs, uh, James Brown, Lanier Swan, Jesse McMahon. Uh, Jennifer Keller and Michael Mathers. Uh, also, some notable mentions, Super Chats from Nono and John. Nono actually just dropped off two, uh, two one-gallon carboards for me. Uh, uh, was that last week or this week? Earlier this week, uh, which, which definitely helps out quite a bit. Uh, beyond that, uh, still got quite a ways to go. Uh, to get the camera, it's not going to rely just solely on donations. Uh, basically, every, everything that the channel makes uh, uh, over expenses uh, will get funneled into the camera account, and probably within the next three months, uh, I should uh, I should have a camera body to go with this camera lens. But enough of that. Let me click that. Ah, it worked. <laughs> okay, let me get back to YouTube so I can see what's all being said. Uh, funny fee thing like that. Austin and Austin Evan Productions Arts. Can you use coffee filters for wine? Not really. <laughs> you can try, but it's not going to work. I think I know what you're trying to say. You want to use coffee filters to help filter out the wine. Uh, I tried it. It doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because the uh, uh, the yeast particles that, that are still in your uh, 
in your uh, in your wine are so fine that uh, they'll simply write they'll, they'll pass right through the uh, the coffee filter. So it's not really filtering out much of anything. What will happen is that they'll get clogged up real quick <laughs> and you'll find yourself using multiple coffee, uh, coffee filters and not really achieving any real results. So, no. Uh, uh, my only recommendation on this channel that I can give you is that you just have to wait it out and let everything um, let everything uh, settle down, and that just takes time. Uh, and that's pretty much I had with, with the form of uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, I'm going to turn the channel basically over to you people, and I will answer any other questions that uh, you have in mind. And just checking my email here. Uh, and let's see, great video that explains everything clearly. That helped me install mine. Uh, that was for my uh, my other channel. <laughs> Talking about washing machines. <laughs> but again, uh, floor is open. I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. So while you guys are formulating questions, uh, noticed a couple of things about my microphone, my new microphone. Uh, it picks up noise like uh, me tapping on the, on the, on the table uh, quite a bit. And what happens is that while I'm tapping on the table, it interprets that as, as, as um, background noise and it starts noise suppression software that's built in OBS. And when I start speaking, it still thinks that it's suppressing the noise and half of my first word stops. So I have to be careful not to, you know, while I'm just tapping away, I, I have to stop doing that. And at some point, yeah, I probably will have to get some kind of an arm that will hold the thing in front of me and get and that will get it off the table. But lessons learned there. Um, Victor, I have one racking. Have one racking. My wine has cleared up a ton. Uh, just a simple act of removing most of the dead yeast from the bottom. Well, yeah, it is. And you're going to find yourself doing multiple rackings before your wine actually goes clear. You might as well just accept the fact that it's part of the wine making hobby. You're going to have to get, and you really can't see it, probably won't be able to see it on this one because it's only a week old. There's a small layer, about a quarter of an inch of lease uh, building up. And when it, usually when it gets to about half an inch is when I'll start doing my first rack, either that or four, you know, six to eight weeks, I'll, I'll do rackings, you know, just to do it. But yeah, uh, that's an inevitable part. And each time you rack, the wine just gets that much clearer. Um, I'm due for another racking today. Yeah, what did I do? That was yesterday I racked my uh, apple mead wine. Uh, mm, yeah, it was just a simple, no, I actually racked and back sweetened it a bit. So I'm waiting to see if that uh, if fermentation is gonna be complete. Uh, or I'm going to see if it's going to restart. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, 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 sweeten it up to the level I like and then bottle it and call it a day. Um, well, it's funny, fair. you being awfully quiet over there. I mean, you didn't peace out, did you? I mean, <laughs> I'm expecting a little bit more from you today. Uh, one moment. Mm. Okay, cider next. Uh, the cider that I did several months ago, back in December, uh, I need to check my hydrometer reading on that because it's a fine line between making cider and making wine. <laughs> okay, uh, the ABB level of ciders is much lower and I'm not quite sure if I might have inadvertently made wine uh, instead. Stephen M, after my first racking, my strawberry wine is, you're lucky if it cleared up after your first racking. Uh, first time I made strawberry wine, uh, it was, I didn't think it would ever clear up. <laughs> In fact, after about my second or third racking, I think second racking, that's when I started experimenting with uh, using um, uh, eggshells. I was I was tempted to start using egg whites. I mean, you know, natural clearing agents to see if that would do it. Uh, the eggshells didn't really do anything. They, they started to fizz up. I think it's releasing CO2, but in terms of clearing it, it didn't seem to work for me at that time. And I just kind of like, left it alone. And after leaving it alone long enough, it started clearing up to the point where it did become a clear wine and it was actually quite good. I wonder if I can pop this live chat section out. 
Yeah, I can, but it doesn't make it any bigger. That's too bad. You know, just bear with me a second here. Uh, I was hoping that the live chats which, that I see are pretty much the same size on your, uh, on your end. It's just kind of small, and the monitor is like way <laughs> over here. So when you see me hunched over and trying to squint a little bit, it's just me trying to trying to focus in on the uh, on the live chats. I can't move the monitor close up because then it blocks the camera. So I'm kind of stuck with the way things are. Uh, Austin and Austin Evan Productions Arts. Do you clarifiers? I don't know because I don't use clarifiers on this channel. Again, Austin, this channel keeps it as simple as possible. So no, no sparkloid, no bentonite, none of that stuff you're going to find here in this channel. Um, I mean, I guess they work because people swear by them, but I just don't see myself putting that kind of stuff in in my homemade wines. Uh, Vector, the papaya peels. Uh, yeah, I read the, did the research on that when I did my strawberry uh, papaya wine. And yeah, the uh, papaya peels does contain a certain amount of uh, natural pectin enzyme, uh, which and you've seen me use it. It is the only thing that I will add to my wines only because I don't have really the luxury of time to let my wines clear up before I have to put my cardboards back in operation for the next batch for this channel. Uh, so it's always an optional item. Uh, does pectin enzyme work? Yeah, it does. Well, most of the time it works. And there's just some wines where it just doesn't work at all. But I'm just saying, William Fleming, have you tasted the banana wine recently? Nope, not since I did the uh, banana wine tasting. Uh, and it was clear that, yeah, next time I taste it, it's going to be at the 12 month mark. That's wine that apparently does not want to be rushed. So those remaining four bottles that I've got, those will remain aging, bottle aging until 12 months at least. Uh, I made one in September 2, 2020 and it's still aging. Last time I tried it, mine was not. You're right, it's not. Um, uh, there are just some wines that are like that. <laughs> you don't know till you try or until somebody else tries and tells you, hey, it's going to be 12 to 16 months at least before that's, that's ready. Uh, but what little I tasted of it, I mean, I can see where it's going. I, I, it has potential, but uh, I'm not going to crack open a bottle and pour a glass. Not right now. <laughs> not for a while yet. Uh, John, uh, which yeast is more alcohol tolerant? Did I get this question from you earlier? I have to check because this question came up earlier today, John. Uh, I did a I did a video on the uh, uh, Red Star wine yeast uh, regarding uh, alcohol tolerances, uh, heat tolerances, uh, what they're best for. I might suggest you might want to take a look at that, and you can find that uh, on my channel page under the uh, under the playlist. Uh, wine making operations is one of the. Uh, yeah, it's one of the standard uh, playlists that I use for that. Uh, that might give you a little bit more information on that. Uh, but if you're going to ask me which is more alcohol tolerant, the red or the blue pack, I mean, seriously, you might want to go ahead and, and, and review that video. I can tell you, uh, find out which one is which. Uh, Legendary Drew. <laughs> All right. I attempted, a, you attempted a dark cherry meat and on last racking, it tastes bitter. Is it something to be concerned about? Well, I don't know. Uh, true. I mean, you do realize that meads, just like wines, I mean, they can uh, they can ferment dry and will require some back sweetening uh, uh, to get it to your level. I don't know how long you've you've let that mead sit before racking it. Uh, generally, when I rack my wines, I will pour just a tiny little smidge in a, in a small three ounce Dixie cup, you know, just barely covering the bottom of the cup uh, to do my tastings. I really don't drink it because <laughs> I know it's not done. Uh, but if it's uh, if your hydrometer reading says that it's uh, below 0.994 or 990, then you know your mead is dry and uh, you can probably, depending on your method of back sweetening, you can probably start back sweetening at that point. Uh, so that's all I can say there. John, thanks. Uh, Amanda Bree, how does aging change the taste? It, 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 
there's a process called uh, malolactic fer uh, fermentation that occurs uh, during the aging process. And basically what that is, is uh, when wine first starts out, it's got a lot of malic acid and that gives it a basically a real, relatively harsh taste to it. And as time goes on, uh, that converts into lactic acid and uh, it has a much more mellower taste, uh, which basically improves the overall flavor of the wine. That's pretty much what bulk aging is, is, is all about. Uh, after that process has been completed, then yeah, your wine is basically done. You can start drinking it uh, and have an enjoyable bottle of wine, but that process will vary from wine to wine. I did a, uh, I did a video on that. I think I did two videos on that. Again, you can find those in my, uh, my playlist section of my channel page under winemaking operations, where I talked about that a little bit more in detail. Oh, no, no, it's in the house, by the way. Uh, no, no, thank you again for those two one gallon car boys. Uh, they will most definitely come in handy. Um, I didn't realize you were streaming tonight. Glad I didn't miss it. Yep, this is that mid-month, mid-week experiment <laughs> to see if this is going to work. Uh, but right now, I've got, uh, looks like, uh, I mean, I expect a small crowd, but then again, my live streams are fairly small anyway. Uh, about 10 people are still hanging around. Nine people. And myself, including myself. A um, couple of things. Uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll backtrack just here a second for you, uh, no, no, because during the housekeeping section, I did point out that uh, I did uh, congrat or thank a few people uh, for the uh, donations, uh, and you were definitely mentioned over here in, in the super chats portion of the uh, uh, donation section. Uh, but yeah, roughly fifteen percent of the way there. There will that will change probably on the twenty second or the twenty third when Amazon pays uh, pays up for last month, and after I deduct expenses for last month, which included among other things this microphone, the degassing one, the bottling one, wine corks, wine stoppers, labels, um, two carboys. There was a I spent a lot last month. I wasn't planning on getting the camera when I when I started spending all this stuff, but these were things that the channel needed finally. So I spent a lot. Uh, this month it should be uh, a lot more that I can divert over to the uh, PayPal uh, DIY fermentation PayPal account to go towards the camera fund, uh, uh, and that's pretty much where that stands there. So let me get back to where I was at. Okay. Got a full, full uh, Stephen M. Full blown addiction going here. Ordered my fifth, six, six gallon carboy. <laughs> you know they have treatment programs for people. Like that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and started a blueberry wine this weekend. The blueberry wine should actually turn out pretty well. I was kind of pleased with it. Thinking more blueberries next time, but uh, Marcus. Marcus, have you ever made a, uh, nope, I can tell you that right now. Nope, I haven't. Honey, banana, and jalapeno was good. I ran across recipes where they're using jalapenos. Interesting. Uh, Vecta, if this wine turns out okay, may I invest in I may invest in a three gallon carboy. Three gallons, you're talking about 15 bottles of wine. So if you're gonna make it, you better make sure you really enjoy it. <laughs> That's all I can say there. That's one of the many reasons why I'm only doing one uh, one gallon batches is one, I don't really have a lot of space to, to store three or six gallon carboys, not in this place. Uh, and two, uh, if, say, for instance, this beetroot wine <laughs> is not something that uh, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy, <laughs> then I don't want to have 15 or 25 bottles of this stuff lying around. I mean, I, I, I might have other plans for this thing. <laughs> so, again, uh, if you've got a, a, a recipe that works for you quite well with one gallon, go for it. 
Uh, three gallon cardboard. Da, 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 asterisk. Uh, Amanda Bree, uh, are you filming? With, what are you? This is tricky, but let me see if I can do this because I hadn't planned on doing it. I am using. I want that, and I want that, and I'll turn that off. I'm using this. I'm using my cell phone. It's on my. It's on a tripod. Uh, it's a Samsung Galaxy Tab 8 Plus. So the phone itself is is getting on in terms of uh, Android years. They no longer provide any Android updates. Uh, they are still providing security updates. So you know, as long as the phone holds up, I'm going to use it as a phone. Uh, and as long as I get the security updates, I'm going to keep using it as a phone, but I'm not looking to buy a new phone <laughs> anytime soon. It's certainly not a flagship level phone. Uh, I just don't need, I just don't need all that. So again, uh, the phone, it, it was nice to start out with, but just, but basically I need a real camera and it's as simple as that. Uh, let me get out of here. Turn that on and turn that off and turn that off and get back here. Okay. What you guys don't really see is that I've got four pieces of software that I'm trying to juggle <laughs> to, to, to give you this smooth trans parent uh, presentation that you see here and sometimes it takes a moment to you know just to focus in on what it is i'm doing so just have to bear with me uh vector yep uh, it'll be a long process i'll see if it turns out uh you're right and one thing that i, I usually try and let people know is that wine making is not a quick process uh technically yeah it, it is wine after about a week or two <laughs> technically it is but it's not really something you want to drink uh, if you can avoid it. Yeah, you've made alcohol and yeah, once that thrill of having made alcohol passes by and you want something that you can actually drink <laughs> and enjoy, then yeah, you just have to wait it out. Uh, let's see, but uh, it's a decent wine, like 15 bottles of it. Okay. Hmm. Stephen M. Yeah, so many wines I turned... Uh, I turned my walk-in closet into a regular closet, into a regular closet, I guess. More a missing part of that. Uh, regular closet, I guess. Yeah, I ended up turning my uh, utility closet uh, into uh, my whole casing closet. And then I turned around and bought a washing machine, which took up about a good third of that space. So I had to rearrange a lot of stuff uh, to try and, to make it all fit, but... Yeah, it, it can grow on you. Uh, it might look simple with this little one gallon batch, but as soon as this video is over, there's about 18 or 20 more of these in that closet <laughs> where this is going to go back to. Um, so your closet shrink is wine growth. It does. Uh, it turns out that in my particular case, the closet has a more of a temperature controlled environment. It's cooler uh, than where I had been starting it when I first started out uh, by putting it in my bedroom, just kind of like in a corner somewhere out the way. Uh, but I don't cool or I don't heat uh, all parts of my, my, my apartment all at once. I mean, if I'm not in the bedroom for the rest of the day, there's no point in me turning on the air conditioner or turning on the heat to heat up a room that I'm not going to be in, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but that closet is, is it's it's right dead smack in the middle and uh, the temperature control is, is, is just perfect. I don't have to worry about it. Hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, I was rather proud to uh, report earlier this week. I think it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. I finally hit 4,000 subscribers. Thank you all very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, I grant it. Now, granted, in the overall scheme of things, uh, uh, there are many, many YouTube channels out there with a heck of a lot more than 4,000 subscribers, but... Uh, it's been, it was a long haul, and I, I gratefully appreciate everybody who decided to just click, click that subscribe button and uh, hang in with me. Uh, 
it lets me know just how much this channel is, is appreciated. Uh, but then again, uh, please do not, uh, well, a couple of things. One, uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so uh, there are usually links uh, uh, to Amazon products that I use, like uh, airlocks and, and stoppers and this, that, and the other that uh, you can just go ahead and click on and uh, I'll get what you need there. Also, uh, Super Chats and Super Stickers are a way of helping support this channel. And finally, while we're on this uh, this, this uh, supporting uh, kick, uh, memberships are also available as well. Two levels of membership support, uh, simple uh, primary level, uh, which gets you the uh, advanced ad-free <laughs> uh, viewings of, uh, of my videos, uh, usually a few days uh, ahead of uh, the rest of the crowd. And the uh, secondary members who get all of the outtakes, which are usually just a stream of obscenities about me not getting my lines straight or not being able to formulate what I want to say in my mind and nothing but obscenity has come out sort of thing. Uh, that and a few other little tidbits uh, for the uh, for the secondary members uh, of which uh, no, no is one. <laughs> uh, let me do you. Congratulations on the 4K. Um, Projecting it out, I should hit 10,000 sometime around February or March. Unless I'd really got busy and, and, and just started kicking out a lot more videos, but I'm not really planning on kicking out a lot more videos until I've gotten a new camera. Um, I mean, this works, but uh, I, I want to see a real camera. I want to see a real camera lens pointing at me, and I want to be able to uh, uh, get a much, much better quality product. Uh, and plus, I'm planning on taking some time off. I don't know if it's soon. Uh, I'm starting to slow down a bit now. I've got a lot of stuff on my content calendar uh, that I need to shift over to the actual assignments of, of, of dates, of, of publication dates that I just haven't gotten around to it. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, when I, whenever that uh, situations like that occur, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it means that uh, it's it's getting time to uh, for a break, uh, probably two or three weeks. Don't know, don't know when, but uh, <laughs> it'll be coming. And as far as breaks are concerned, no, it's not me scheduling uh, videos in advance to cover the time that I'm taking off as a break, because what happens then is that video goes out and I've got 20, sometimes 30 comments that need to be responded to, because I do respond to all comments. Uh, and that's not a break. <laughs> okay, that's, that's me working. <laughs> and if you ever had a, a YouTube channel or considered doing one, <laughs> All this is work, <laughs> hard work. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I, I digress. Uh, good day for a box of wines making another appearance. Uh, can you Amazon affiliate? That's what I thought it said. Can you Amazon affiliate a dozen bottles? I need to order two dozen for five gallons, and I like to. Um, I actually don't have a link for Amazon bottles. In my links because i haven't actually bought any bottles from amazon everything that uh every link that i have on amazon are things that i have bought okay for this channel they're not given to me i did not demos i everything i bought i bought okay so i've done all the research and you've seen me using the stuff so uh, if you if you click on a link the way it works is that if you click on a link and it takes you to a product that it's something that you don't want or or are not interested in, and you decide to just cruise your, your way over to uh, another product uh, uh, over the course of, I think, th two or three days is the option, uh, then I would get a, a small, small commission off what you purchased there. So if you looked at, say, an airlock for like three bucks and you decided to buy a, a, a 75 inch widescreen TV, I get a commission on that 75 inch widescreen TV. <laughs> that's that's how that works. Uh, but no, Amazon commissions are relatively low, I guess, this, because it is a small channel. And uh, there are only 4,000 of us uh, uh, making use of that channel. Uh, there's not really a whole lot there. Um, 
Good day for box one. Okay, I bundle up my next purchase. Thanks for explaining. Yeah, that, that you know, I'll let you know basically what what it is is that on average, and I'm not gonna pull up my spreadsheet because that means I gotta click a lot of extra buttons here that I don't want to do. Uh, I am now beginning to average on average from Amazon about thirty dollars a month. So, like I said, there's not a whole lot of money there for uh, for a very small channel. Um, but again, that money also gets shifted over to the uh, uh, DIY fermentation PayPal account for the camera fund. Uh, so I'm not actually making a, every before I decided to get the camera uh, after expenses, I would take about half of what I had, what I made. And basically that was my salary I mean, I as well <laughs> reap the benefits. But now everything gets shifted over. So I'm not actually making anything. So when you hear people on their channel saying that uh, all of their money that they get on the channel is actually goes back into the channel, they mean it. <laughs> that's, that's not a joke. That's that's the way this uh, that's the way YouTube seems to work. Uh, lobster, lobster, lobster. It's a new one. I've seen people use Thea in their wine. Can you explain? Me? I have no idea what that is. Uh, lobster. I don't know what Thea is. You don't have to explain what that is. Nope. Don't know. Uh, fee. Well, that doesn't help. I still don't know what that is. Uh, nope, don't know. And at the moment, I am not going to Google it. Okay, you have to elaborate a bit more on that. Peabags. Well, dang. <laughs> That's all you had to say. <laughs> Yes, and the reason why people use tea bags in their wine, well, I wouldn't use tea bags. The reason why people are using tea in their wine is really very simple. Uh, tea is a good source, black tea is a good source of tannin. And if you aren't using tannin powder, uh, then the tea bag or the tea is a, you, you would substitute the tea for, for, for tannin. Or if you're using oak chips, then you can use oak chips instead of tannin or tea bags or oak spirals, or oak staves oak cubes, oak barrels, <laughs> uh, they will all provide uh, uh, the necessary tanning for some recipes. So yeah, you'll see me using uh, uh, tea quite often. In fact, I use uh, tea in uh, this particular batch. Uh, tea provides, uh, well, the tanning provides some astringency to the wine. Gives it, uh, gives it a certain mouthfeel. So yeah, you'll see people using tea bags and you'll see people using you know, other means uh, to provide tannin to give that stringency uh, to their wine. There you go. Legendary Drew, thank you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's see, revenue. Nope, haven't done it yet. Hmm. Thirty. All right. All right. If you, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, legendary Drew, no, I do not sell my wines. It's, it's not legal. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can make up to 200 gallons of wine for personal use. You can give it away as gifts. You cannot barter with it. You can't sell it. You can't do it. You can't do anything that's going to uh, return to some sort of monetary or even a form of exchange, some sort of form of gain. Uh, that's not how federal law works. Um, uh, yeah, you could uh, take out the necessary licenses uh, from the state and, and federal government to uh, uh, sell wine, but these are home wines. These are not really commercial grade wines, uh, uh, and especially uh, the way that uh, they're made uh, without use, use of uh, sulfites or, or any other uh, uh, additives to uh, uh, 
extend the shelf life of the wine. Uh, no, these are not wines that you're going to sell uh, at all. Uh, when I get, when I get good enough, maybe if there's some local competitions, uh, I may enter my wines in that way. But uh, no, it's not. Uh, you can't make a profit <laughs> legally <laughs> uh, by by selling wines. Uh, John, can I bottle DIY wine in a screw top bottle? And if so, what are the drawbacks? I really don't know how I want to answer that question, John. Uh, yeah, you can use a screw top bottle if that's what you got. Okay, if that's what you got, that's what you got. Uh, the only drawbacks are, well, if you're buying your wine, well, how can I say this? I personally don't buy wine in screw top bottles because I've never been... How can I say this? Uh, I've never been happy with, with the uh, contents of the bottle. I'll put it to you that way. So I don't have any screw top bottles uh, around. Uh, no, no, who occasionally or, or was providing me with uh, with a, an assortment of bottles, uh, some of which were, were, were uh, uh, screw type bottles with a cap. Um, thank you, no, no, but. I could not make use of those. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I've become snobbish in that, in that respect. I didn't bring any wine bottles with me, but they all now have cork. Well, they all now have well, uh, natural corks. I was using artificial corks for a while, but uh, uh, no, I guess that's just me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, there, there's a limitation to that uh, wine making on a shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a little bit extra and I'm gonna buy, buy a wine bottle that, that requires the use of a cork. But no, if you've got a wine bottle that has a cap on it and you can get that cap on there nice and secure, uh, then I don't see why not. I don't really see any drawbacks to it. Um, Brad Palmer, I use screw tops all the time. See, there you go. Know what's I know what goes in, so I'm happy with what comes out. Well, there you go. Uh, you, when I would go to a wine store, you know, wine store. Let me. When I would go to a store that sells wine, okay. I mean, unless it's something that you've been buying on a, on a regular basis and you kind of know what it is, because uh, uh, the consistency is pretty much the same. Uh, if if that particular uh, uh, vendor decided that they wanted to start using screw cap bottles. Then you know what I would not have a problem with that because I know that it, what it would taste like before is not going to be any different with a screw cap uh, screw cap uh, bottle later on. But if it's something totally unknown, okay, uh, I John is pretty much correct on that. If you know what what goes in and you know what's going to come out, and that's that's my thinking on that. Uh, Victor, can you uh, get polysil cap? You can get policy caps. Okay. Yeah. The policy caps are, yeah. I have two gallons, John. I have two gallons fermenting and very few bottles. What was that? Last uh, fall? No, last summer. At the end of one of my videos, I pretty much said that I was going to stop making videos for a while because I ran out of bottles. Uh, and when you run out of bottles, that means that uh, uh, you have to stop making wine because you've got nothing to transfer this into at the end of the day. Uh, bottles are, are, yeah, you can, bottles are, are, they're not really, well, they're not expensive, but they're not really cheap. <laughs> Neither are corks, really, for that matter. Um, all of my bottles were recycled wine bottles. Um, mostly from Walmart, their bottom shelf, they're like their house brand wines before they jacked up the price. <laughs> kind of stopped doing it now. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much a way of doing it. Uh, yeah, just simply recycling your old wine bottles. Uh, two gallons, and that means you need uh, 10 bottles at least for that particular batch. Good day for a box of wine when out of bottles, oak age and weight, which is what I've run into with my situation. Uh, now that I've got more carboys, they're bulk aging longer anyway. I mean, I actually have uh, 
enough to bottle. I've got 10 free bottles that are that are ready for use. But now that I've got carboys to let my stuff bulk age longer, uh, none of them are really ready for bottling. Uh, I'm just not that, in that big of a rush anymore, which is why you kind of stop seeing me do the six month wine tasting because most of my wines have been bulk aging past six months uh, before I, I put them in bottles. So yeah, the six month wine tasting was probably going to come to kind of an end. You're going to start seeing more seven, eight month tastings instead. <laughs> it's just the way things are working out. <laughs> uh, but okay. Uh, I say, then, uh, if you use peptic enzyme in your wine, how long do you have to wait before adding? Um, peptic enzyme, I believe, is 12 hours. Yeah, I think it's 12 hours for peptic enzyme. I mean, you. the only thing about peptic enzyme and, and yeast is that uh, the, the alcohol produced has a... a slows down the effect of the peptic enzyme, as I understand it. I mean, you can put it in anytime you want, before or after, uh, but generally it's best to just go ahead and put it in uh, at least 12 hours before. Uh, you'll see many of my videos where I am going to use peptic enzyme, where basically it's like late at night, so <laughs> that's an overnight thing as far as I'm concerned. Come back in the morning and, and finish up the video. Um, that's my answer to that. Amanda Bree, uh, can I age my wine for 10 years? I don't know if you would want to age homemade wine for 10 years. And I certainly would not recommend it if you're not using sulfites in your wine, which I don't do here. Uh, sulfites, apart from uh, like your canning tablets are, are good for sterilizing your fruit. Uh, but I get around that by by putting my fruit in boiling water. So I, I get around that aspect of it. But at the at the other end of the process, sulfites, uh, uh, when they're added, uh, when you're at the, the bottling stage, uh, as a, it reduces oxidation of the contents of the wine uh, quite a bit, which is why sulfites are used. So when you go to the store and you pick up a bottle of wine and it says contains sulfites, it's pretty much to make it shelf stable for, for years and years and years and years and all that. Uh, but for homemade wine, I, uh, for legal reasons, I would say no. <laughs> if you're not using sulfites and you want to try and do it for 10 years, I, I'm sure there are people who are doing it and have done it successfully, but I'm not going to say, you know, based on my recommendation, go ahead and do it. No. <laughs> uh, how, yeah, I mean, if you back on that, your comment, Bree, I mean, if you're doing a kit wine, or some, or not even kid wines, because not all wines are designed to, to to last that long. I mean, we're talking commercial wines. Uh, some wines have a, a shorter shelf life than that, usually six or seven years. You'll have to do the research. You'll have to do the Google research on that, because not all wines are designed for ten years. I mean, Burgundies or stuff, you know, stuff like that. They're designed to go for 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 many many years. That's that's different. But this stuff here, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, how long can you keep homemade wine? Well, I just kind of answered that question for you there. Um, after basically most homemade, well, most homemade wines, they're gone relatively quickly. Uh, uh, a year or two, I would say, based on what I've been seeing, uh, just doing a bit light research on average, it's about the average. Uh, some will go more, but usually within a year or two, this stuff is gone. <clears throat> okay. Oh, it took them long enough. Okay. All right. I am happy to report that Yesterday, I made a grand total of $6.25 <laughs> on my ad revenues and all of that uh, from YouTube, which for this channel is actually a very good day. <laughs> Just in case you want to know how much a channel like my size, uh, my size makes on, a, on, on average on a given day, uh, yesterday, $6.25. 
Another good thing about uh, the type of videos that I do on this channel is that uh, they're considered evergreen videos, which means that uh, uh, any day of the, of, the, of the year, somebody might want to make a, a peat root wine, uh, they can pull up my video and, and it will be just as relevant then uh, or today as it, is, as it will be then. So uh, this wine will continue to make revenue for as long as it's a YouTube, I guess. Uh, I'm just saying that's that's pretty much how this works out. But grand total of about 81 videos so far, both public and private. Yeah, I'm averaging $6.25, which is a good day. <laughs> All right. Um, mana. Really? Mana Knock Valley. Mana Knock Valley. Hmm. Love your videos. Thank you very much. Uh, never had any interest in making liquor, but your videos are incredibly bingeable. I I get this a lot. And I don't quite understand it <laughs> myself personally. <laughs> Uh, to binge watch my videos, I'm flattered. I don't understand it. I'm flattered. <laughs> I mean, some of my videos, they all follow. Thank you, Monarch Valley. Appreciate that. That will go towards the camera fund. And I'll give you a special shout out during the uh, next live stream uh, to that effect. Um, I forgot to turn my clock down. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for reminding me, Brad. <laughs> At eight o'clock, they're going to be eight times because I'm not going to get up and turn the volume down on my clock. I, you're the first person to make mention of my clock since my very first video when I had my when, didn't realize the clock was going to be an issue. <laughs> okay, normally I would get up in about an hour before and just take the clock off the wall, turn down the volume put it back up there, uh, but didn't remember it. I forgot. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when I, uh, Bre uh, when I rally, uh, $5 is more than I had going towards that camera fund. There's no, there are no little donations. Granted, it might take me longer to <laughs> reach my goal, but there are no little donations. Uh, I can say it and we'll say it again. Uh, $5 is more than I had. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, Amanda Bree, I started my beet wine four weeks ago. It might be ready. Four weeks to bottling. Are you sure? You know, if you wait, it will get clear, right? Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, it is quite sweet. Four weeks. Amanda... Without knowing what, what your starting gravity was and without knowing what your current hydrometer reading indicates, I mean, if you're if you're happy with drinking your wine after four weeks, that's your wine. I mean, do do what makes you happy. Uh, I'm usually follow the standard uh, four to five rackings uh, before I bottle. Usually uh, the wine will be dry by then, depending on which wine yeast I used. And I think with even this one, I used uh, uh, Red Star Premier Blanc, which uh, has an alcohol tolerance of about 18% and will most definitely end up probably going dry, uh, so, uh, which will cause me to start having to back sweeten it to get it to my sweetness level, but that's months away. So if you're drinking your wine after four weeks, hey, <laughs> if it does the job for you, then <laughs> go for it. I'm just simply saying that, uh, hey, might want to just give it some time. Uh, Brad Palmer, honestly, I do like the chiming clock. Don't change it for us. Well, it would certainly save me a lot of hassle because turning down the volume and then turning back, the turning up the volume back to, you know, where I like it. <laughs> uh Sometimes requires a couple of a couple of tries at it, but no, I'm going to keep it turned down because it is a distraction. And I actually did one of my outtakes. Uh, 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 the secondary members saw it, where I I, I, I do a countdown three, two, one, and then uh, I'll start uh, start speaking uh, in my video. Well, I, I I managed to get three, two, and then 
before I had a chance to say one, the, the dog on clock started chiming and it went on and it kind of interrupts the flow of things. Okay, Because <laughs> once, once you get up the nerve and say what it is you think you need to say, and then all of a sudden you, you're interrupted, it kind of throws you off. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to turn it down uh, just so that it's not a distraction. I actually don't hear it much anymore, even though I've got the volume turned up a little bit. Um, the video I was... The video I watched said that beat wine is best very It's not what I'm saying. I didn't I didn't see any videos on making beet wine. I looked at some of the recipes uh, on making the beet wine. Um, no, I would not drink it young. And having made it, there's one aspect of making the beet wine. Uh, when I was actually cooking the beets, it has a very distinct aroma, it, it, and, I, and I mentioned this to uh, to Nono. It smelled like boiling dirt. Okay, so yeah, I'm a little leery about this. I understand people say that it's a great wine. Uh, uh, the sites that I looked at, uh, where they were talking about how they were making their versions of the wine, basically said that uh, it ends up as being a very, uh, very nice uh, red wine. Uh, but again, it takes time for that to happen. Um, but that's just my my take on it. Uh, the only I rarely look at videos when I'm coming up with recipes uh, for these wines. Uh, if I do look at a video on YouTube, it's actually I don't even look at the videos. What I do look at is the uh, number of views that the video has received and over what period of time uh, that they received them. It kind of gives me a heads up in terms of whether or not uh it's something i want to do or, or worth doing uh, in terms of uh, uh getting getting viewers uh, to the channel uh, i mean if they've got like a thousand views and the, the video was made you know, two or three years ago that tells me a couple of things one it's probably wasn't it, it may not have been a great video in which case there's there's room uh, uh to to improve it which is what i did with my lemon wine way back when last year uh which is, I think, one of the first videos that actually started to take off uh, on this channel. Uh, Stephen M., thank you very much. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> um, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, but that's my take on it. Um, when, when, when I did all of my, my six-month tasting videos, I mean, they all pretty much, in my opinion, they all had the same theme. Uh, the malolactic fermentation was not complete. There was always that level of harshness at the back end. Uh, the wines just weren't done. Uh, it, it just weren't done uh, uh, in my taste. Now, I would also say that uh, when I first started making wine, I was drinking them after a couple of weeks myself. I mean, three or four weeks, <laughs> that bottle was, that, that wine was done. Okay, it was, it was drunk. Uh, it was only because I got tired of seeing a heavy uh, layer of sediment or yeast at the bottom of the wine glass uh, that I began realizing that I don't want to see that anymore. And I know if I waited long enough, that stuff would begin to settle out. And uh, as time went on, I began realizing that the longer I waited, the better the wine was tasting. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much my evolution uh, in terms of waiting for wine. Uh, I don't have a wine yet that has yet made it to the full 12 month mark. Uh, I've got some that I think are nine or 10 months old that are getting kind of close. Uh, I usually save at least one bottle of the five uh, just for that 12 month mark. But yeah, that's that's pretty much my take on it. Uh, I've learned that the longer you wait, the better the wine will end up being. Uh, again, Stephen M, once again, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, that was kind of a long-winded explanation, but I don't mind giving explanations. Uh, again, uh, because it is a small channel and the Super Chats, I'm sorry, live chats are going at a, a nice steady pace where you can actually read them. Uh, if there are any questions that I actually didn't get a chance to get to uh, once this channel starts getting bigger and this, the, the chats are scrolling across the screen at a rapid rate, uh, you'll usually find answers to those questions in the uh, uh, community section uh, on the DYI fermentation channel page. <laughs> Brad Palmer, if it helps, I made carrot wine. You know what? I keep seeing people making carrot wine where it keeps coming up. 
I mean, this was my first vegetable wine. Okay, so I, I'm kind of curious to see how that that goes before I, I, I make something different. Uh, parsnip wine. Somebody keeps bringing that up. Uh, root vegetable like beets, and they really did need 12 months, but they were lovely. I hope so. I do. I really do hope so. So far, I, I've only been disappointed once when I've made a wine, and that was that rice wine that I made. Uh, some at the six month tastings were kind of like so so. I mean, uh, there was one that I tried, it was, it was either the peach or the mango, where I did a no, it was the mango. I did a six month tasting and it was, I mean, it was okay, but the mango flavor was, was, was real, real light. It was hardly noticeable. Uh, but I cracked open a bottle, I think about two weeks ago, uh, which I think would have been about eight month mark. And it actually tasted a lot better. It did. Uh, so I'm going to try and refrain from touching any more of that and uh, uh, wait until the 12 month mark uh, before I crack open another bottle. But I, it, it just goes to prove, at least to me, that the longer you wait, the better it will be. Even wines that are kind of like so-so at the six month mark. Uh, all right. Oh, if anyone was actually kind of hoping that uh, I would uh, reach over and pull out another bottle of Jack or or, or an equivalent, uh, no, you that won't happen. That was a one time only thing. And I was really, again, in celebration of getting my first COVID shot. Another one Friday. <laughs> I'd be so glad. <laughs> I'll, I'll be kind of immune. Um, but that was a celebration just for that. Uh, now, because I'm trying to get that camera, I can't afford that anymore. That, that money goes towards the camera fund. Uh, once I get the camera, maybe I'll celebrate again. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I got 18. I've got 18 concurrent viewers, which is kind of surprising. I mean, it's small by other channel means, but it's about my average uh, for a regular live stream. I wasn't expecting as many. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Just making sure I didn't miss any, any questions here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, since I got you guys here, um, like I said, because I don't use them on my channel, well, I don't use them anymore. I think my first few videos I had been, I had used Camden tablets. I just don't use them anymore. Uh, is there any of you out there uh, still using sulfites in your winemaking? Uh, just, just, just curious uh, to see if uh, you guys are still using them or not. Uh, my channel is not unique in that regard of not using sulfites. There are several of them out there, uh, which have that same philosophy. So, um, I'm just kind of curious if any of you guys are still using so not are still using sulfites. If any of you guys are using sulfites in your wine, now there you go. <laughs> it's not like I'm calling anybody out, Drew. I'm just. I'm just asking a question, okay? <laughs> mm. That's good. Um, no, there, uh, Mind of Dr. Valley, there's not a, a, a specific kit because we don't do or I have not done uh, kit wines on this channel. Uh, so I can't make any recommendations. Uh, I don't know. At some point, I might do one just to, or for the channel just so I can say that I've done one and this is how, you know, how to do it. But I haven't done one yet. Uh, in fact, the last kit wine that I actually saw being done, uh, my father was doing it. Uh, when he was in his winemaking uh, uh, phase, 
And we're talking, whew, we're talking 30, 40 years ago. I, don't, I can't pin down the exact date, but we're talking decades ago. Uh, and it's, it's probably because I remembered that uh, about a year or so ago that uh, kind of gave me the impetus to uh, uh, give my hand at or or try my hand at making uh, home wine making myself. But again, didn't have any money. So <laughs> I had to make sure that everything I did was could be purchased at the grocery store, which I was the big reason why I came up with the uh, 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 wine making on a shoestring budget. If you don't have any money, <laughs> how are you going to make wine? Well, you're going to make it this way. Well, if I'm going to make it this way, then I may as well pull out my camera, cell phone, and uh, and document that journey. And that's pretty much the, the impetus for this channel. Uh, you're old. Yes, I am. And I'm retired, which means that I don't have to get up and go to work every day. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but that's not quite true. This channel is actually hard work <laughs> all day, every day, <laughs> at all hours of the day. I'll get up at like three or four o'clock at night for no other reason. In fact, that I'm just not sleeping well. And uh, I'll look at my phone and there's always that, that blue flashing notification light that lets me know that I've got notifications. So I'm turn it on and there's a little gear icon letting me know that it's a uh, a YouTube comment notification. So click on it. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm responding to a comment. Uh, and doing that only because I know that if I don't, those comments are going to pile up. <laughs> and then by the time I get up in the morning, uh, when I finally go back to sleep and then wake up, there's usually, you know, a stack of them that I have to, I have to go through. And uh, yeah, this is like an all day, 24 seven job. Um, making dragon's blood and tropical dragon's blood wine. Your videos inspired me to try. Hmm. I'm still trying to figure out if the dark cherry still qualifies it as a dragon's blood wine. Um, I know regular tart cherries would be, uh, is in the usual recipe for dragon's blood, but, uh, I'm assuming that dark cherries kind of sort of qualifies, but I'm not calling it dragon's blood because I wasn't quite sure. Uh, Fleming, uh, I have thought about trying the Kiselo, Kiselso, Kiselso. I'm trying my best to pronounce that. <laughs> really, I am. Uh, and Chittosan for clearing, but I have not tried them yet. You know, William, although you should know this, this is just for the for everyone else. If you wait long enough, it will clear up on its own. <laughs> Granted, there are going to be those those rare exceptions. Peach wine never cleared up. Can't really seem to get the apple wine to, to go crystal clear on by waiting it out. I mean, there are some exceptions that wine just is not going to go clear. But uh, yeah, I Not mad at you. But if that's the direction your hobby is taking you, then I'm not mad at you at all. Uh, but it looked very awesome. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Now then, getting back to No-No's comment. Hmm. I should point out, you were just nine years younger than I. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, we want to talk about age. <laughs> uh, don't need that anymore. Surprising, I've got 18 of you still here. And we're just talking to you know, Chicha. I'm assuming that the live stream, the mid-month, mid-week live stream is, is, is working for everybody. Uh, I know some of you, well, looking at the hours, eight, seven, six, five o'clock on the, on the West coast. You guys are just getting off work. You're probably still stuck in traffic. Um, try to accommodate as many people as I can uh, doing the scheduling, but, uh, <laughs> uh how can I answer this? Uh, from no, no, uh, no, no has agreed 
although not until she's gotten any shots, <laughs> to show up for either one of the live streams or for one of the taste testings. Uh, so you'll get a chance to uh, uh, gaze at her beauty yourself and <laughs> come to your own determinations. <laughs> Um, I'm in the UK, 1, 1 a.m. in the... So for you, earlier here is better for you. One o'clock, Brad. Up late for a weeknight. I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry for that. Um, I, I might, because the mid-month, mid-week is still kind of an experiment, I might see if I can adjust the hours earlier um, just to accommodate those of you on... on uh, in other parts of the uh, the world, basically. Uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, I don't really want to do like a lot of live streams, but uh, I'll use the mid-month, mid-week live streams as a, as a, just to try to feel out what's probably good for, the, for most people. Uh, I think the next one I will probably do, bump it up an hour at say six o'clock, see how that turns out. Uh, for some people, if I've got more people at six, then, uh, then it's set, then it's seven, then, you know, that might be the norm, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, got my first one today. All right. <laughs> That's, I'm glad to hear that. Um, again, I've got my second one Friday. It's a hassle trying to get over to the east side, but I've got my first one, last one Friday. So what, eight days after that, I'm good. Hopefully. Unless some self-advocate variant <laughs> takes me out. <laughs> when is this stuff ever going to end? <laughs> I'm so tired of it. <laughs> uh, okay, don't have to get up early. Well, okay, I'm glad. Um, Deborah Goodwin, I think so. I missed part of that question. Uh, Deborah, could you elaborate just a little bit as to what you're referring to? I'm not seeing any earlier question or statement. So, um, unless you're referring to Amanda's comment, uh, just let me know what's going on there. All right. Thank you. This live stream was not supposed to be too long. Okay. All right. All right, chapter two. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right. Okay, folks. Um, it's like seven after normally my normal live streams usually run for about an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes <laughs> i'm going to try and cut this one short if there are no further questions uh no notes comment ah in which case i hmm better with age i think you just get more used to it <laughs> with age <laughs> I think I better let that one go. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> um, all right. It's eight after. I'm going to say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to wrap this one up again. Uh, the live mid-month, mid-week live stream seem to be working out okay. Um, so I'll probably will keep them. I know I'm going to do at least one more next month. Yeah, next month. And uh, again, we'll... we'll probably an hour earlier and we'll just see how that goes. Uh, for those that, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, one second, have a good one. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Uh, I like to learn how to do a rosé wine. Um, won't be doing any rosé wines here. I am still giving some, uh, serious thoughts to making a rose petal wine. Uh, Problem is just getting the uh, rose petals. More than likely, they'll probably end up having to be dried rose petals, get them off Amazon, uh, which, as I'm beginning to read through it, it, they work, but just not quite as well as fresh rose petals. But then again, fresh rose petals. I don't know if I want to spend that kind of money. It depends. 
it depends. I'll have to, I'm, I'm still looking at it. But a rosé, no. Uh, you should make vodka. Uh, not here in the United States, uh, Amanda. That's not legal. Um, that's distilling, and they won't they won't let us do it. <laughs> uh, so that can't be done. Um, let's see. Uh, good day for box one. Thanks, Charles. Always glad to catch the live stream. Well, glad glad you could make it. And if I don't get off this live stream, it will never end. So, folks, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click in stream. And uh, don't yet know what I'm going to make for my next uh, next batch of wine. At least I do. It's going to be the uh, date wines since I've got two pounds of dates in the freezer and two pounds of dates uh, still in the package. So the date wine will probably be the last thing I do for a while, for a little bit anyway. Uh, so that will be that. And as for everyone else, uh, hey. Peace. See you next. See you next time.